Now I'm just going to do a few examples from 7.2. So I wrote one here, find the exact value, and I put A here, tan of cosine inverse uh, equals cosine inverse of negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is I actually just draw the unit circle. So when I do these inverses, this is kind of what I'm dealing with. And I think of this unit circle idea here. Now notice, essentially what I do is I'm actually plugging in a ratio, and I'm getting out an angle measure. Now this angle measure, think about where it runs from. Because we're dealing with cosine inverse, that simply means that we have to restrict our domain of our cosine of theta. But that's actually a restriction on the range of my cosine inverse. So my inverse is going to run from 0 to pi. Okay, so this is kind of what we're thinking of here. All right, so now when I look at this, that tells me that either my cosine inverse is going to result in the first quadrant or the second quadrant. But notice this is negative here too. So that tells me I'm actually going to be in the second quadrant because all of them are positive in the first. So this is going to be my triangle I'm making here. Now cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to be my three here. And then this is going to be my two up here because it's adjacent over hypotenuse. And then over here, this is going to be 1. And I know it's 1 because it's my special triangle. And if you didn't know, you can just do the Pythagorean theorem. And this tells me then that this angle is going to be 30 degrees. So that tells me the angle I'm thinking of is going to be 150 degrees. So now the nice thing about this is I pretty much have exactly what I need now. I actually did the problem. So this part right here is going to be 150 degrees. So that simply means this is the tan of hundred and fifty degrees, and that's really what I'm looking for. So what is the tan of hundred and fifty degrees? So tan is opposite over adjacent, so opposite over adjacent. So that tells me it's gonna be one over negative square root of three. Now there's a few things I'm going to do here. I'm going to rationalize the denominator, and then I'm going to move the negative on the top. So I get negative, oops, square root of 3 over 3. And that's going to be our final answer for this one here. Good. Better answer.